Bible says Matthew chapter number 5 verse 13 ye are the salt of the earth but the salt have lost if the salt have lost his savor wherewith shall it be salted their funds forth good for nothing but to be cast out to be trodden at the foot of men. Verse 14, you are the light of the world, a city that is set on the hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it gives light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Matthew chapter 22 verse 8 and 10. Then says he to his servants the wedding is lady, but they which we are we are not worthy. They that were bidden, we are not worthy. Go ye therefore into the highways, and as many as ye shall find, bid. To the marriage. Go ye therefore into the highways. We are still in our subject of back to Pentecost. We are tracing where the saver was lost. And we are asking God to give us back that silver that we may become profitable to the kingdom of God. Praise God. And we realize uh, as we said last time that we are vessels for use of the master. And we are already vessels. So we don't belong to ourselves. So the Lord created us for a purpose. And he said that you are workers in his vineyard. And his vineyard is the world. So he said you must be ready vessels. And as vessels, we must be ready to be used for the agenda of the kingdom. So it's not thy will, it's God's will. So we are, we are just ready. We are waiting for instructions for the master to use us. 
as much as we have our own agenda, we must know that there is a bigger picture of the agenda of God. And therefore, the assignment that we have is the assignment of God. You know, in a normal world, when, when you are both scores, you, even if you have other things that you are doing, everything else becomes irrelevant. Atakama ulikuwa kwa mkutano, nasema mkubwa na itana, na mkutano huu, tunahairisha mpaka wakati, because the higher office has called you, and always we submit to the, that higher office. So our assignment must be subject assignment. It must be in line with what God wants us to do. So we must understand kwaba sisi ni vessel. Vessel haina ni kama haina akili. Hakuna vessel hiko na yani Paul anasema we ni chobo. So chobo, kuna chobo anasema ya zahapu, chobo yigine isiyo na maana sana. So chobo ni chobo na hakuna chobo kina akili, kina lison. Mkubwa akitaka kuchukua hii anashukua. Akisema hii ni ya chai, hii ni ya wageni itatumika hivi. We have no time to ask because they are just made for the master's use. That's what God wants us to be. It does not mean that we are irrelevant and we cannot think. But what you are saying, we have surrendered. Ready. We have given it all to him. Ready for him. And therefore, today, uh, I want us to discuss about how this vessel can be used. And I want us to see uh, what we call gospel to the market priest. Telospo narisema out where the sinners are. And Jesus said go everywhere. 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 Never use any opportunity to witness the gospel. He says, go by ways. Those who have been bade, those who have been invited, they have not responded to the gospel. They are not faithful servants. So leave them. And says, now go out in the highways, in the byways, that is the agenda of the kingdom. And he clearly puts it in a sprint. He says, for the son of man came to seek and to save that was lost. That is the agenda of the kingdom. That is why God so loved the world and he gave his begotten son that whosoever Believed on him. But Paul says, how can they believe if there was not somebody who was to speak? How can somebody go unless he's sent? Unless he has a message. Until a messenger receives the message and becomes faithful and delivers the message, then the gospel we always become irrelevant. And the purpose of God raising the church is because Jesus could not do it alone. He couldn't do it alone. Jesus was a, was a team prayer. He was a team prayer. In fact, you find him with a very, the inner circle of Peter, James, and John. And wherever he went, that in the circle, whether in the mountains, when there is glory, he was there. Whether it's in the morning, 
when he was required in a very tense situation, he calls them, he goes to them. Whether it's in a mountain to pray, in the times of trial, he has that in a circle. And then he brings the twelve. And then he builds the one twenty. And then he calls us all. And that is the purpose of the church. And if the church does not leave the purpose of God, then the church has lost its silver. And that we are the church. The silver is out. The silver is witnessing. The silver is people knowing about the kingdom of God. That is the silver. When you hold the gospel, when you don't become a part of spreading the good news, then you have lost the silver. And the church has turned and begun to do other things. And sometimes I see how frustrated the kingdom of God is. Because if God gave his son to die, and at one time he was groaning, and he was praying, Father, is this your will? And there was no answer. Because this was the perfect will of God that he come. But what he began, he could not accomplish. That's why he raised the church. So the church was the intention of God, was the plan of God, that what Jesus came to do, then the church can continue. That's why Jesus gave it all. And that's why he said it's finished. And he released his ghost. And now it says it's now upon you, the church. You can continue. And that's why he said, wait upon Jerusalem. And that he's, he, I'll raise myself. I'll pray the Father. He'll give you another one. So that the anointing that was upon him, that can move now together with you. This thing of making the kingdom, establishing the kingdom, because he came, but he may establish the kingdom here on earth. And that he said, as it is done, in heaven. Let your will be done also here on earth. It can only be done when you have faithful people. That's the church. And when the church realizes what God wants, Mambo Mengine, Kama Kanisa, Haiko Katika Laini, Yamapensi Abwana. And that's why he warned the disciples that you wait upon Jerusalem so that the Holy Ghost will always connect us to heaven and that you shall always be doing the will of God. We become subject. We follow him. He'll tell us. He'll show us. He's a teacher. So that we don't move from the will, the assignment, and the purposes of God be established here on earth as it is in heaven. That is the gospel reaching the world. Anything else is secondary. It's the gospel. Anything else we do. If we do anything else, it's because we are building in what God is, want us to do. And that's why we must reach everywhere and reach the unleashed people and do the gospel here at home and build the kingdom of God here. And what we build will begin to take the gospel. Even the wealth that God gives us is to take the gospel. <clears throat> Anything outside that is, is outside the will of God. And we must become obedient stewards of God. So, I think whoever coined this word marketplace had the liberation of God. Because it's that place of business. Market is a place of business. And the kingdom is business. The things of God is business. It's serious. Anything else is number two. Place is a place of interaction. 
it suppress the market price. It's a place where we spend most of our time. It's the gospel to the people you see every day. That's the market place. The neighborhood. When you woke up, your neighbor is there. When you're going to sleep, you are interacting. Mnakutana na jirani yako. You love shoulders with the na your neighbors all the time. That is your marketplace. Hallelujah. And in the marketplace, Christ, Christ is not only preached, but he is displayed. Not only that we preach, but we display the gospel is displayed. I can say that uh, in the marketplace, the gospel is lived. There is very little speaking. But uh, there is a lot of washing. Because it is in display. It's where you, you, you walk the talk. You do what you say. You demonstrate by your actions. It's where the actions speak louder than the word. And here is where your, your actions complement your words in the marketplace. And people can piece together what you say, your witness, and your actions. They can pick those pieces and then they can say, Query, you mama me okoka. Now, when I answer Kutamani, Kosababu, when I answer Kupatrika, when I honor Yesu, I buy a life, life, and I own a cana. See, see, your maneno pekeake. Christ is displayed. The marketplace is gospel in classes you teach. It's gospel in the office where you are living together. And when you are in your business, kwa soko, kwa duka yako, that's where it is. And I tell you, like here, I've discovered one thing. When you are dealing with the business people in this area, and I believe in other areas also, because I remember even when I went to, when I went to India, and I was buying something, then I, I, I begin to witness. I always take that opportunity, because the businessman would not like to collide with the customer. They are very careful. Their hearts are open. And when you are dealing with a business person, the moment now you are talking about uh, uh, about he na kama anachomboka kweda ukuletea igine na anajua nataka kununua mwe wake ukuwasi. That's the time to plant. Ask, are you born again? Do you love Christ? Ata kama atuwa ni yale magaidi. Ata wa islamu ni mehupiria na lombi. Wakati unachika pesa hivi. Eh, unamuabia bali ya esu. Na ee, ana, ana kujibu. Na kuwa violent. Because it's a time their heart are open. When you are interacting. It's where your actions they supplement. They complement. Your words. And that's why I'm saying be salt of 
your world. You know, let be sought where you are living. Let your testimony be, be seen in action. Be the light. When the light shines, the Bible says, when the light shines, it is cease. Nikama in answer, kupasua huko na maneno na matedo yako. In answer, kuonekana vizuri. So if you have salted, your actions are salted, then you are right chain, people can now begin to recall and say, yes, truly this man is a, he's reborn again. We can have creative ways of witnessing. We cannot just rely on the old ways. When you go in very hard clouds, hard clouds, where Christianity is, is, is received in hostility, the only thing that can make you become a witness, the only thing that can save you is when you have something actual. And that's why we, we, you know, we go and we build hospitals. Like when the missionaries came here, they had to buy the loyalty. They built the hospital. People are sick. They did not have medicine. So they built hospitals. And the sick chiefs and the sick people were healed. I was reading in a, in a missionary book in one of the South African missionaries. And when they went there in South Africa to preach the gospel, those early missionaries, he, he realized that the tribe was very hostile. So, akaida kwa chief, akona vitu, akamuletea vitu, ya kutoka ulaya, vikobe na kathalika. Alafu, the chief was sick, and they treated the sick. In fact, the same story happened to a sister called Mary Sleza, who began a church in Nigeria in those early years, 18, I think 18 for 6. And many, because they had learned, you know, little medicine, the chief was sick. And when the chief was sick, about to die, she prayed, God bless this medicine. And she treated the chief. The chief responded. It was healed. And the door of, of a missionary of people receiving the gospel was open. So we must also own this thing. And we must have a desire uh, to do the things of God. We are God's representative. We are God's children. We are ambassadors of the kingdom. And we as ambassadors, we must be truly representative of the kingdom. And we must have a desire and our heart na tusikubali mioyo yetu ibiwe na mambo ya dunia kesi ya kwamba bwana hataweza ha, kuwafikia ama kukufikia kwa sababu moyo wako umeimbiwa na uko pale there is a place that we must utilize and that is the gospel out in the marketplace in fact the bible says in colossians chapter number 4 and verse 6 if you will, Colossians chapter 4 and number 6. Let your speech be always with the grace. In other words, we cannot be careless with our speech. It must be seasoned with the salt that you may know how we ought to answer every man. So we must be accountable for every word that we speak. We cannot afford to be careless, especially when you are living with the outsiders and people who does not have the gospel. Sisi ni waitaji na tumeachiriwa you know, that we can win the souls of the kingdom. We must have baits and our bait like fishermen is our words. Our words must be seasoned with salt. You know, the Bible says in the book of Acts chapter 11, this is how the early church lived. 
they brought our brother Barnabas when the church in Jerusalem they had the grace of God and what God had done in the in a, in a, in a non the Gentiles that a number great number first and had believed and they had turned to the Lord so what they did they sent Barnabas that he should go as far as Antioch and this man they say Barnabas he he was a man who was good verse 24 and full of the Holy Spirit and faith and much people were handed unto him so then they departed Barnabas to Tarsus to seek Paul verse 26 and when he had found him he brought him unto Antioch and it came to pass that the whole year they had saved on themselves with the church and taught much people and the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. You know, Barnabas had grace. Barnabas was a reconciler. Barnabas was a somebody, if you see somebody was a deficiency, he would bring that person. You know, Barnabas was the one who brought Apollos, a man who had deficient, a person that, you know, who can restore people to the kingdom. There was a grace over his life. And the Bible says he was a good man. You can't work with the kingdom when you are not good. If you are a good man, good men, they know how to sacrifice. They, they know, they give themselves. They sell themselves. They have given themselves to Christ. So the good man, which the Bible here is referring, is that this man had already given himself. He had sold himself to the kingdom. And not only that, he was sold himself to help people to know Christ and to mentor them and to release them. And they stayed with Paul who had an anointing to impact the church. And the Bible says, Antioch. People, you know, the name of Christ was like a reverence. It was a nineno about the number of Kidogo. Lakini linaonyesha kwamba kanisa was really identified na hiyo watu. Kwamba huyu hao watu tabia zao, mienendo yao ni habari ya ule Kristo ambaye tunasikia habari yake. Jina la Bwana libarikiwe. So this is what Christianity is. This is how they were able to turn around their generation turn around their world reach the people christianity is not for only a few people who are standing in the platform no christianity is for each one of us we must be responsible where you are you must display christ you must portray you must live the gospel this is what god has called us Akuna. Mungu kama wewe Hakuna Mungu kama wewe Ikuni 